Hello my friends, what's up? Welcome back, my name is Shada and on this channel we get creative together. It is the first Friday of June and as you can see, I am very pregnant <laughs> and hopefully as you are watching this, I am no longer pregnant, I better not be. <laughs> and Chris and I will be on our maternity leave, which is actually going to be the first three weeks of June. So there will not be any new videos for the first three Fridays in June, except that today there kind of is, obviously, um, because today we're gonna to do something that we've never done before and I'm releasing one of our Patreon bonus videos. So every month we give a bonus video to the patrons and today we're gonna to release one of those older ones. This kind of gives you a chance to peek behind um, the Patreon bonus content curtain and see what the patrons are getting every, every month. And it's a really fun watercolor tutorial that I think you'll really like. And I just wanted to say thank you to the patrons because we could not do this without you. We could not do this free content every Friday, the whole YouTube channel. It works because of you and because of uh, your support. If you're interested at all in supporting us on Patreon, you can head over there, check it out. It starts at $2 a month and that it's $2 to join and then $2 a month after and there's no commitment, like you can stay only as long as you like, but we give weekly bonus content like coloring pages, worksheets, um, art prints, that sort of thing. And then there's also a monthly uh, extra bonus video. So we've been on Patreon a few years, so there's I think about 40 extra videos over there for you to binge on. And today you get to see one of them so you can see the kind of stuff that we're creating. It is from a few years ago, so well, 18 months ago. So I think it was before we went to 4K. So you might notice like a slight downgrade in the quality, but it really is a great tutorial that I have seen already so many great recreations of on Instagram because the patrons really loved this one so we're sharing it with you today hopefully I have a baby somewhere right now and we're just chilling on my deck <laughs> Chris and baby and I and you can enjoy this and we will be away for the next two weeks but if you need some more content you can get it over on patreon otherwise we will see you uh, the final Friday in June with a new tutorial, a pre-recorded tutorial. Let's say that we're away for a little longer, but um, thank you for all the sweet comments and messages. And I'm still active on Instagram. So come and say hello and meet baby over there at Shada Campbell. Hey patrons, welcome back. For this month's bonus tutorial, we're going to borrow from the November Plan With Me video and paint a graphic watercolor floral that incorporates a shape or letter. All right, you'll need some specific supplies for this project today, so let's run through them quickly. First of all, I've printed the letter S. You'll wanna print whatever letter you're going to use for the middle of your graphic piece on a piece of computer paper. And then I um, have some masking fluid, and this is something that I haven't used on the channel much, but it's a not an expensive product. You can buy it at most art stores or on Amazon, and it's a fluid that will protect certain areas of your project or painting while you're working on it. So it sort of turns to like a, a rubbery latex material on the page. For the watercolor portion of this, I'm going to use my little Derwent pocket set. I really like the colors in this palette. I've got two uh, synthetic pointed round brushes as well as some clean water and paper towel for blotting. And then I've got a pencil here. Oh, and I have a paint brush to use with the masking fluid, just a cheap brush because the masking fluid can wreck your brushes. Um, okay, so we're gonna take our pencil here and flip over the computer printout and we will go and add a whole bunch of graphite to the back of this in order to transfer that letter. Um, so just get messy and <laughs> lay down some uh, pencil there. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna put this on top of my watercolor paper. So I'm using hot pressed watercolor paper today as well, but you can use cold pressed or whatever. I've taped that in place and then I'm just carefully going around the perimeter and you can see it transfers really easily. It's not a big deal um, and you don't have to have a perfect line 
or anything. If any of the pencil areas are a little thick, just uh, erase lightly. So you've got this nice light transfer. And then we are going to take this masking fluid and we're gonna take that cheap brush that you uh, is not a good quality paintbrush. This is just a synthetic brush that uh, has had its day since I've used it heavily already. And uh, I am just going to paint in the masking fluid. And it's really gloopy. Uh, as soon as it hits the page almost, it starts to dry. So just keep adding more and you're going to fill out the entire area of the letter or whatever shape you might have chosen to block out for the project. Just make sure you go right to the edge, but if it's not perfect, it's not gonna matter in the end. And then we're going to give that a second to dry and I want to start mixing up my paints and I want to think about the color palette that I'm going to use for this project because you sort of want to have a thoughtful color selection. I think that really makes this piece work. Um, so I'm going to do all these pinks and peaches and uh, almost like a creamy yellow and purples. So I've mixed up a nice, um, dark pink and then I'm doing a lighter pink with a bit of white and a bit of orange in it to make it a little more peachy. Um, I'm also mixing up a yellow that has a little bit of white and a little bit of pink or orange to make it kind of like a light mustardy peachy yellow. Um, so you can see I've got my palette all mixed up and those are the colors that I'm going to use for this project and they all kind of work together because they're going to be sitting quite closely and, and layered. So I want to have a thoughtful palette that works well as a whole. With those colors mixed up, I'm going to come over here and start painting flowers. And you can see I can paint right onto the masking fluid and the paint just won't go there, it won't sit there. It's like trying to paint on saran wrap or something. And I want to create a border of flowers around this S, around the masked out area. and. Um, it's, uh, it's quite easy. The flowers do not have to be perfect. You'll notice some of mine are barely more than blobs. A lot of the ones that I'm starting with, I start the flower right in the middle. So instead of five petals uh, going out in a circle, I'm doing three petals as if I've just got uh, exactly half a flower sitting there. Uh, the roses, the really simple roses that we do that are sort of a spiral. Um, those are really good because they fill in space really nicely and they're quite easy to do um, when you're just trying to do a half a one. I also find that something like a daisy is really good because you just do these streaks going out, the long thin petals, and those are really good for filling in space as well and it's easy to kind of paint them as a half a flower. And of course you can add leaves. Uh, I'm going to do all my leaves in this very dark, almost burgundy-ish brown. And that'll add a nice contrast, I think, with all the light pinks and purples and peaches that I'm using. And uh, I'm just sort of going around and around, adding flowers and adding color. And uh, you'll see as, I, as some flowers dry, I'll start to layer other flowers in beside them. So just be careful as you layer. If something's still really wet, give it five, seven minutes to dry and then do your flower, the next flower beside it. If you have a letter like an S that has these really tight curves, you're probably just going to want to put some color in there. You can see I'm sort of pretending to paint a flower, but I'm not really. I'm just putting a little bit of a color blob and, and having fun with it. And then where I can, where I've got more space, I can add uh, or I can paint what really looks like a flower with the longer petals or more detailed rows or something like that. It's also up to you how far out you want to take this. So you could just do a really thin border right around the letter or shape that you've masked out. Uh, what I'm going to do for my part is I'm going to take it out a little bit. I want it to be this big, loud floral design. And so I need to um, sort of amp up the flowers and I'm going to go out a couple inches on both sides of the letter. And I think that'll look really pretty and uh, it gives me more of a chance to paint as well. And here what you can see me doing is adding lots of these dark leaves. So as the flowers begin to dry, I'm layering in more leaves using that nice dark brown for lots of contrast. 
And so, yeah, this is quite simple. Just a wet on dry here. I'm letting things dry. And then when I know that they are, I can add in a darker color on top. And so in that way, the layering process of the painting becomes really easy because I'm, I'm not layering onto wet paint or anything like that. So I have lots of control here. And what I've done now is I've flipped the painting upside down. So I found it was easier to paint on the right hand side, just probably because I'm right handed. And so naturally I filled out the entire right hand side and the left was looking a little thin. So I'm just coming back in and adding more flowers on the left, working upside down doesn't really matter at all in this piece. There really is no right side up especially with the letter S, I guess. <laughs> and um, yeah, just filling in space, trying to make sure that it looks fairly equal as a design, that one side doesn't look too much heavier. We're not going for perfect symmetry or anything like that, but uh, just want to make sure that the floral border looks fairly balanced and it's not too heavy on one side. And keep adding those little leaves and little details. And of course, you can come back in here with some darker paint and add more detail to your floral shapes. And that will help too if you've laid down what are just basically some colorful blobs. If you come back in and you add some little dotting like I'm doing here, it looks like you're adding a little stamen to the center of a flower. Or if you have these circles for the roses, add a few lines, a few uh, curving lines and it looks like that rosebud spiral. So just coming back in and adding that hint of detail can really bring this piece to life and really make all these shapes look like flowers. And I think that's kind of the magic of this project. It's a, it's a really good bang for your buck, this one. It's not difficult. And with my flowers done, I'll let that dry completely. It doesn't take long, it was just the watercolor that needed to dry. And then what we are going to do, this is so fun, you're gonna come back in and just rub at the masking fluid and it will come up quite easily. It turns into, I think it's like a latex material that dries on the page. And uh, voila, you have this beautiful negative space area in the center, this nice bright white page. If you see any pencil marks there, you can erase those. And, um, and then the last step is optional. This is a very dangerous step. I repeat, very dangerous. If you see some little areas that you wanna fill in right along the perimeter of the letter, go for it, but beware. You don't wanna mess up your piece at this point. You know, Only you are gonna see those, those little areas. And you can see how I've just touched up two points. Yes, it helped a bit, but it was not necessary. And then I'm all done. I've taped mine into my watercolor sketchbook. Um, I could have just done it in the sketchbook, but I wanted to use hot press paper. And I am so happy with that piece. It's really fun and just a great way to practice your watercolor florals. Thank you patrons for watching this bonus tutorial. I hope you have a great November and I will see you soon over on the YouTube channel.